Well, hello, boys and girls. I don't know if anyone's out there yet, uh, but if you are, hello and welcome. And um, we're just going to have a little bit of a garden chat today. We'll talk about harvesting and we'll talk about preserving the harvest. So, I... I don't see anyone out there yet. And I've got a strange noise going on behind me. Hey, Eric Hill. Sorry about that. I had a strange noise in the back and I needed to find out what it was. So it's good to have you here. We're just going to talk about uh, the harvest. So how's your harvest coming along? And we put up, uh, I've got a video that's going to be coming out later today or tomorrow. It's um, it's on uh, preserving pickles. Uh, we have, uh, we put up 45 pints of pickles. I like to put, put pickles up in the pint containers as opposed to the quart containers because then when we take them out, um, it's, I can finish up a pint of pickles in a couple of days and yet it leaves me with some pickles for later. So 45 pints of pickles won't get us through the, the year, but we're getting about five pounds of pickles a day, something like that, five pounds of cucumbers a day. And so um, we'll be harvesting them. We are not going to markets today. Um, Yeah, I haven't gotten any tomatoes yet, Eric. Um, yeah, the, the sound was a little machine that my wife has in the uh, uh, in the other room that came on. I, I think it's a humidifier, or de, not, not a humidifier, a dehumidifier, but I've just never heard that sound before. Um, so when you say grape tomatoes, is that... We grow the sweet 100s, which is a cherry tomato, but then the grape tomato is a little bit smaller than that, I think, um, if I remember correctly. I've never grown them. But Farm and HVAC, welcome to my live here. We're just going to chat a little bit today about, uh, about the harvesting and about um, putting stuff up for the, for the season. So... Um, right now there's not a lot of people here. Uh, I don't know. I wasn't here last week. I was out of town. I thought I'd be back in time for the Thursday live, but I, I wasn't able to get here. They're called Juliet grape tomatoes. You know, I'll have to try them. Um, we've grown every year. We grow some cherry tomatoes. I don't know that they do all that well. I mean, we get hundreds and hundreds of them, but they don't sell all that well at the market for us. We do a lot better. Out here, the plum tomatoes, the uh, Roma tomatoes do really well. 
Next year, I'm going to try growing some of those Sam, Sam Marzano uh, tomatoes. Uh, I understand that they're a good um, saucing tomato, and maybe we'll maybe we'll do better with them. Um, now, farm and HVAC. Do you do you just grow for yourself, or do you sell on the market? I don't I don't recall. Um, and I, I don't know if you realize this or not, but you and I share the HVAC part as well. I've been doing heating and air conditioning for over 40 years. I started in 1979 and uh, um, really 1980 full-time, but the summer of 1979 uh, just grows for himself. You know, I think this year that might be what happens to us. We're... We're looking at it. We're looking at the season. We're looking at what we've got coming in. We had a drought this spring, and um, it took a toll on our beets. It took a toll. I've got collards like crazy. I've got um, Swiss chard. I've got um, kale, best harvest of kale I've ever had. And this is the first year I've grown sweet corn in probably 15 years, and uh, the sweet corn is really phenomenal. Um, I had meant to go out and pick some of it. It's a little hard for me to eat sweet corn anymore, but um, everybody else sure enjoys it, and I do my best. But uh, our cabbage did real well this year. I've got both red cabbage and green cabbage. Green always does a lot better for us than the red, but um, Joe Serrano, welcome. No, oh, you're not late. I mean, it's this is just thir uh, Thursday night's just kind of a drop in. Um, we uh, we're just talking about what's coming in in the harvest. Uh, Farm and HVAC, do you grow any lettuces like uh, bib lettuce or anything like that? Or Eric, I know Eric, you you grow quite a bit of variety. I, you know, it, it's terrible this year. Things have been so busy. Um, I haven't gotten to a lot of pages this year. I, I generally start getting to people's pages right around late August, early September. Uh, work slows down for us a little bit. And of course the garden slows down. All we're doing is harvesting, but um, so Eric says, I can put these up on the screen. I forget that I'm up here. Um, Eric says he quit growing sweet corn because of the deer and raccoons. We have got something, and I, I think it might be a raccoon. I don't think possums will mess with the, the corn and, unless it falls or lays down. Uh, we just uh, dealt with a possum the other day. Uh, he won't be bothering anything anymore. But... Um, Something's been eating my corn, and the problem is they take so much of it down, and they don't eat all that much of it. So, you know, you you have to you have to get on them. I've got some gophers that are chewing on my beets. They don't eat much, but you can't really once the beets have teeth marks in them, they're they're fine. We use them. We just peel that part off, but and it doesn't cause them to rot or anything like that, but you can't sell them at market. So we've had a, a problem with the possum. And depending, I've got probably a half a dozen or so watermelon that are ready to be picked in the next day or three. And um, in the past, I haven't, I haven't done well with watermelon. It they usually aren't ready until way at the end of the season, but we've had a lot of heat this year, which has helped a lot. I, I would, I don't mind a hot summer. I, I'd like to have more heat, but um, uh, 
Joe, Mama Goose does not like squirrels at all. And the only way I like them is with a little garlic. Well, never mind. But uh, squirrels don't squirrels don't make it out here very long. We don't get very many of them, but man, they don't last very long. Yeah, I, I watched David the Good quite a bit also. I haven't watched him at all in the last six or seven months, but I've watched him quite a bit. What What's bad is when you you find where the raccoons have been nesting. They, they tend to like to nest in the old buildings. And uh, you'll find you'll find your chicken feathers up there from the chickens that they've eaten. And you'll find corn cobs up there and just all they just make a mess. They're they're terrible. And they'll a raccoon will go into the chick if if a raccoon gets in the chicken coop. He'll kill your chickens and leave them there. Uh, he'll take one and leave the rest. Just cut their, bite their heads off is what they do. So we had one, and, and I think it was either a raccoon or a red fox, 36 chickens in one night, dead. We got up the next morning and it was blood all over the chicken coop. It was really a sad thing. Yeah, Eric, I suppose if it's up in the air or high, they're not going to bother it at all. But uh, well, um, Joe, I, I, I don't think I've ever eaten possum. Um, I tried to clean a possum once and there's just not much on it. So I, I've never bothered with possum, but I have eaten raccoon. And um, my mother used to cook squirrel in a crock pot. We'd put the squirrels in the crock pot. You'd get six or seven of them and she'd put them in the pot and they would cook all day while she was, she was a school teacher. And when she got home, I think she put them in like mushroom soup or something like that. And squirrel eats, eats really well. It, it, that's a, now there's not much meat on the bottom. It's mostly the hind legs and a little bit up on the back. Um, so I kind of quit eating them because it takes longer to clean them than it does to eat them. And that might just be that I'm not very good at cleaning them, but uh, you know, um, Joe, I'd like to get some of that Azores corn. I'd like to try that. I, I would like to see the look on my neighbor's face when they see how, how tall that corn is. And I think it's, I. I think it gets higher than eight feet. I think he was about 12 feet tall. Um, our dent corn will get seven, seven to eight feet tall. Um, when the, when we get, we have dent corn growing around us about seven years in a row and then they'll plant soybean for one year. But um, for the most part, we have, dent corn growing around us and uh it keeps the deer out when we have soybean we'll get we'll have deer in and early in the spring i'll i'll find deer prints in the field um but uh yeah we don't uh we don't get deer because the corn is so thick around us so yeah i think Eight foot is pretty standard. Ten foot sometimes. I don't know that I've ever had dent corn at twelve feet, but you know you're you're in Ohio, so you're going to be um, you're going to have a longer season than we do. So 
you're probably growing a longer uh, longer period of time and growing a corn that will handle that longer growth period. So, Eric, I forget now, what kind of tractor do you have? I think you've got a, I think it was a farm all, I, 400 maybe? I don't remember. I'll have to get over. I, I really feel bad. I haven't been getting out to people's sites very much to see their videos. I, I can't really explain. Well, it's just we put an addition on the house, and we put the addition on last fall, and I didn't work on it this winter because it was too cold out there. And then this spring, I've, I've been trying to get it done so that I can do these live feeds from the addition. So, oh, that's right. That's right. That's a cool little tractor. I remember watching. I mean, it's not little, but that's a cool tractor. I remember that now. Um, we're looking at, I, I've got a couple. I've got a Ford uh, 9N. Or, uh, no, I'm yeah, it's a 9N. And then I've got a Farmall B and a little Kubota B2000. Those are all just sitting in the shed. Um, I suppose they would, well, everything but the Kubota would start if I took the time to do it. The Ford needs uh, points and carburetor re rebuild and all that. Uh, the uh, the farm all probably could use a new float in the carburetor, or you know, little little work on that. But I think those two would run just fine if I took them out. But that little Kubota that I've got, it's a 1972 B2000, and um, it it needs a new motor. Unfortunately, we put way too much on it. Um, and then this year, last year, was it last year? Yeah, last, oh no, two years ago now, uh, we bought a um, Kubota, what is it, a 20, 2610? And uh, that's a nice little 25 horsepower tractor. I, I really, really enjoy it. And then I've got the big Ford uh 545 60 horse Ford and uh it's it's great for tilling uh you know that's why I plow my field it's a lot of fun but uh 1978 2630 so um that's a 60 horsepower isn't it 55 or 60 horsepower I don't, I don't know the John Deere numbers really, but uh, I think that, well, I don't remember. My dad, my uh, grandfather, uh, my uncle had a couple John Deere's. Um, I think he, I don't, I don't remember. Well, he had a, he had a um, John Deere B, the Pop and Johnny. But I don't. I think we only use that for hauling hay. And then he had a Minneapolis Moline, a mini mo, and I drove that when I was about 14, 15 years old, pulling a hay wagon with it. It's a lot of fun. So, so, Joe. We just had a big conversation about how many ears of corn you get. So modern dent corn today, uh, you'll get you'll get a what they call um, the actual ear, which is a big big ear of corn, and then you'll get a faux ear or a secondary ear, which generally doesn't. Uh, doesn't kernel out. It might have a few kernels on it, but it usually doesn't do very well. And that's because of the way that they uh, 
put it all together. But uh, my sweet corn had two ears, and they were, uh, they seem to be, they seem to be good. But the corn that they grow around us, I think it's because um, they're getting earlier harvests, and uh, they're planting it so close together um, that uh, it it just doesn't. The, the second ear doesn't really come out. 68 horsepower. That's a, that's a good size tractor. My 545 has 60, I think they say it's 62 horsepower is the engine, but it's only 50, you know, 58 on the draw bar and like 52 on the, uh, on the PTO. And it's only a single speed PTO. I would have liked to, uh, the 510 720 PTO that gives you a little bit more power. Oh. Hang on just a second. <laughs> um, I have, I have had, um, I have had Mexicans ask me for uh, corn stalks, um, full corn stalks, but I always thought it was for just decorating for Halloween. Um, but I've never, never had them ask for corn leaves. Now I know, don't, don't they, isn't it tamales or something that they, they roll in corn as well, or corn husk as well. Yeah. We used to, there was a guy that we used to work with. Um, he would bring a whole cooler full of tamales and he'd sell them. His wife would make them all night long and then he'd sell them for 50 cents a piece. And they were wrapped in, in corn husk like that. And they were delicious. Um, some of them got a little spicy for me, but that's all right. Ah, oh, you sold it. I I know. You know, um, I sold. I had a, a little piece of land out in Marengo, which is south of me um and i never actually owned it but it was for a very short period of time i i was in the process of buying it and i changed my mind and didn't buy it and i really wish i had bought that land it was nine and a half acres and they wanted a hundred i think it was a hundred and fourteen thousand for nine and a half acres but it had a uh, a barn on it that was better than any of the barns I own. And then it had an old horse barn that probably deserved to be knocked down. And then the house needed to be knocked down, but nine and a half acres would have been really nice. Um, I've, I've got five now, but I can only really put two and a half into tillage. I might be able to get three into tillage if I really pushed it. But uh, at this point, uh, I'm thinking about having less tillage next year than more. So that Farm Law 404, that came out right after the letter series. So that would have been 1950, maybe? I think 1950 to 19, maybe 65 maybe mid sixties, somewhere in there. I remember those, they were, they had a, um, more of a round front end on them, I think, than uh, like the, the letter series. Uh, I always wanted an M and I still maybe someday if I find a, a wide front end M that's for sale, I might think about buying that, but, um, I, 
I don't know. I don't think I, I'm trying to negotiate a deal right now for an Alice Chalmers A, and then I I hope to be able to take that Alice Chalmers A and trade it for an Alice Chalmers G because the G is the market farm tractor. I um, I almost bought a Hardy G four years ago, and uh, they wanted 4500 and I offered thirty five. dollars uh, The problem is I didn't really have the thirty five. dollars I figured I could come up with it, but I didn't actually have it. And uh, the guy turned it down. He wanted forty five, dollars and he got forty five. dollars That's what they sell for. Same with the farm all G's. They sell for about $4,500. Yeah, Eric, that, uh, that farm all M has got a hydraulic line back to it, and they had that farm all quick hitch on it, or fast hitch. I forget now what they called it. I think it was called a fast hitch. And if you can get the, if you can get the uh, uh, implements for it, that's better than the three point. It's it's easier to hook up, and it operates just like the three point. Um, it's been years since I've dealt with that, but that's a that's a pretty good setup. So, but what's nice about the M is that you do have front and rear well rear hydraulics. You might not have front hydraulics. It depends on how it's set up, and then the. Uh, the H also was a nice tractor. It had rear hydraulics. Uh, the B's and the A's, I, well, maybe some of the later A's had hydraulics, but the B's did not have hydraulics. And so they were less useful. They were made more, I think, for uh, vegetable farmers, whereas the M's were made for your row crop farmers and, and your larger that was their full size. The the M and the H were for farms, and then the the B kind of they didn't make them the whole time. They didn't come along right away, and then they brought out the B. I think in 1940s, uh, late 40s. Mine's in 1947, and uh, so yeah. But that was a nice thing about my 9N. It it has a three point hitch. But it also has a Harley gear, which is your road gear. And so when you put that into the Harley gear, you can do almost 25 miles an hour with just the tractor. Now, there's no power steering. And so uh, mine had a, a loader on the front. So if you were doing 15 to 20 miles an hour down the road, you had no capacity to steer it. Um, it was It was like being at a rodeo. Yeah, I've seen a couple, I've seen a couple of the uh, three points at uh, the thrashery, the tractor shows. And um, what's funny is around here, I don't know, I don't know what it's like by you, but around here, you can pick up an M, a, a decent M that's maybe even been somewhat restored, you can pick up an M for eighteen to two thousand dollars right in there. Maybe you might have to give a few bucks more for it than that, but right around that two thousand dollar range. But you'll have to give three for an H, and the reason is that the horse guys uh, they like those H's, um, and I, I think I think that the H has the same rear end as the M, but it's a smaller motor, smaller front end. Um, and uh, the nice thing about those farmalls, now I've never had a wide front end. I've always had a the, the double-wheeled tricycle front end. They steer like a dream. They really steer like a dream. And... Uh, I, I think where Farmall kind of lost some of their market early on is by not not bellying up to Ford and getting the three point hitch from Ford so that they could uh, you know do that right away. Of course, anything made in the seventies.
going to have a three point on. I don't know what happened there. I went black on my side for a minute there. Um, you know, we have not, I have not been to an auction probably in three years, maybe even four. Uh, I had kind of stopped going to auctions because we were, we had hit a little, when the housing market crashed, things got a little slow and then it stayed kind of slow. And then when the COVID came in, we had just started picking up, you know, two years before we had just started picking up and getting some of the debt paid down that came with uh, the housing market crash. And then now this COVID thing, uh, it hasn't really hurt the business all that much, but they don't, they don't have auctions out here anymore uh, or very few. And, and when they do, I always find out about them afterwards. Um, they don't publicize them in the auction uh, zip, which is where I go for the auctions. Um, and so what happens is you, you don't know they, they advertise them at the parts supply house, you know, tractor supply house and things like that. And if you're not looking for them, you don't see them. So, and I don't know, most of the auctioneers that I know um, around here, well, several of them have retired. So we don't get to the auctions too much. You used to be able to pick up some pretty good deals uh, particularly implements, um, you could get you could get a pretty good deal on a on a big implement, and then you could cut it down if for what you you wanted to do. But uh, anyway, That's quite a deal. Uh, a four row planter for a hundred bucks and it worked. I've gotten some good things at auctions, but I've gotten some, I've gotten stung a couple of times. Um, I bought some shears, uh, sheep shears and I, they were power, you know, and I thought, man, that'd be great for, uh, cutting the hair on the dogs. And, um, they just, they were, they were junk. Normally, when you go to the farm auctions, you don't, they don't have junk. You know, the auctioneers don't want to sell it because that gives them a bad reputation. But um, I passed on a uh, harrow. It was, uh, well, not a harrow, but a four section drag. Um, just the, the steel tooth drag. It was a four section and it was on wheels and you could fold up two of the sections and raise the other two sections up so you could trailer it down the road. And the auctioneer tried to sell it and they would, nobody would buy it. And I think I could have gotten it for $10, but at the time I didn't have a trailer with me and I, I wasn't paying attention. It wasn't something I wanted. Um, but now, boy, I wish I could have. They sell those sections for a hundred bucks. So, but Yeah. Um, so I don't know. I, I look at auction zip quite a bit. I look at Craigslist. I'm waiting for a guy. I was supposed to go out on Sunday afternoon and buy a two row potato digger. And, uh, he, uh, he called me and he said he had to go on a, uh, on a um, family emergency, so he wasn't going to be back until this weekend. So I'm hoping that he calls me. Um, 
we've got a one row potato digger and really all I need is a one row, but the one that I've got is from probably 1915 or something like that. And uh, this one is a two row and it's from 1970. It's on rubber tires and it runs the, the shakers run off of the PTO and the, uh, the conveyor is nine feet. Whereas the one that I've got is about a four foot conveyor. So it'll, it'll, uh, it'll shake the potatoes a lot better and, and hopefully, uh, hopefully clean them up. So, well, guys, I think I might, uh, shut this down. I appreciate y'all coming out. Um, hopefully we'll see a Saturday, Saturday evening. I'm going to be live at seven o'clock and we're going to do a, um, we're going to do a, a, another teaching on how to study the Bible. And, uh, then God willing and the creeks don't rise. Um, I'm going to close out Saturday by singing a solo. And some of you are going to wish I was singing solo. You couldn't hear me. But if you have an opportunity, come out Saturday at 7 o'clock. Until then, Mitz Hashem, I'm Chicken Johnny. We'll see you next time. Eat your vegetables. Hey, thanks for coming by. It was good talking to you, Eric and, and Joe and, and, uh, and uh, Farm and HVAC and Eric. I appreciate you all coming out. I appreciate you a lot. Y'all take care.